if you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what would you change? I would change bad governance. Because you see, Africa is a place where when you get into position, you forget about the people who voted for you. It's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for welcoming me. And uh, I believe that you don't know who I am. I got one of your books. Because uh, I love Africa with all my heart, but reading is a bit difficult for me, yeah? But I'm trying my best. You did a definition of the mother of Africa, the mother of the virgin lady. And I really want you to tell my people about how you did that definition before I even start talking about anything. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, my son, Udemaya. It's a pleasure having you in my house. Yeah. My son has told me a lot about you and what you are doing for the African continent. This book was published in the year 2010. Oh. And what you are referring to, we call it the allegory of the murdered virgin, where we used the African continent to represent a virgin mm -hmm. who was killed by fortune seekers and her body was cut into several parts. And the body was preserved using different methods. The people who killed her decided that they would preserve the body so that in the event of the crime being detected, they would hand over the body to the parents of the lady. Mm. So after a long time, the crime was detected, the body parts were retrieved and stitched together. So that lady is the African continent that we have. So the cutting of the lady into parts is the division of the African continent among the colonial powers during the colonial struggle in Berlin, 1884. You know, in Berlin, the conference was called by Otto von Bismarck. He was then the chancellor of Germany, yeah. and there were seven European countries, Germany, Portugal, Belgium, Spain, France, Britain. US was there as an observer, but no African country was invited. What was the reason? They wanted to calm the tension that had resulted as a result of the scramble for Africa. They divided Africa among themselves. Then they came and claimed their colonies. At the conference, two principles came out. The principle of effective occupation of the colonies, and then the principle of the recognition of King Leopold of mm. Belgium as the owner of the Congo Basin. Can you imagine that Africa was being shared among Europeans, and no African was there. So the sharing is the murder of the virgin. And then the struggle for independence was the retrieval of the body parts. The stitching of the bodies, those are the, the colonial boundaries as we have it now, you see. And then the methods of preservation of the body are the different colonial policies. Britain used what you call the crown colony system and the indirect rule. France used uh, the assimilation policy where the people were divided into citizens and then subjects. So the methods of preservation were different. That is why it's very difficult for Africans to act together as one people. The colonial, even after independence, the colonial powers continue to control us because Despite independence, there's what you call neocolonialism. Are you a big fan of Kamen Nkrumah? Yes, I am. I support and stand by the ideas of Nkrumah. The... After independence, Nkrumah wanted Africans to be united so that they can control their resources 
and use it for the development of Africa. But what happened? The people thought he wanted to become the first president of the United States of Africa. They were against him. All the things he recommended. He said he wanted uh, a common parliament for Africa. He wanted Supreme Court of Africa. He wanted common currency. He wanted a single president and all those things. 58 years ago, that's what the European Union, uh, they have implemented those things. And we, Africa, we are still struggling with the ideas that come in Krumah board. Why? Because we are divided. It's crazy how I'm in Kinshasa, but I can see Brazzaville right there, and they both have the name Congo, yeah? But there's no bridge that is connecting the two countries. Um, apparently, if you're a Congolese and you want to go, to, a Congolese from Kinshasa, you want to go to Brazzaville, you need a visa to go there. I mean, sometimes I feel like we should stop blaming colonialism, yeah? Sometimes it's our fault, you know? I, I, I just don't get it, man. That's crazy, man. Like, they, they speak the same language, right? But because they were colonized by um, the French and this one was colonized by the Belgian, they decided not to, I mean, they decided not to come together. They decided to be in their separate ways. But sometimes when they think about these things, I'll be like, I mean, coloni colonization is over, right? Do you think that Africa will ever unite? Yes, African can unite. How can we unite? If these barriers I'm talking about now are removed. And as I was telling another gathering, you know, these borders, and I also mentioned to my brother, these borders that you create silos for yourselves amongst, you must always remember, are not your creation. These were creations of people outside of this continent who made these borders not to develop you, but to extract from you. Now that you want to develop yourself, we must start looking at these borders and we must start removing the barriers that we have put that have defined and de defined us in the past and now hinder us from being the giant that we should be. Do you think mental slavery still exists in Africa? Yes, it does. It Can does. Give us an example. I'll give you just one example. <laughs> For example, here in Africa, we have presidents. We have parliament, we have ministers of state. But who controls them? Does it mean that Africa is now economically independent? If you say you are independent, it means you eat your own food. Nobody claims he's independent and he's fed by another person. Is that independence? We were politically independent when we had our flags, our national anthems, and all those things. But economically, we were still dependent on, when we talk about budget deficit, we prepare our budgets, we don't have, we go outside for money. When our president wants to have conferences outside Africa, the, the TNT and PDM, it is another country that pays. Can you say you are independent? right now to help solve the problem of Africa because we've been talking about the problems of Africa for so long the youth are yearning for solution what is the way forward I mean what role are you playing in terms of um, solving the problem that we have as a continent thank you very much for that question it's a very complex question hmm. it is not something that one person can do anything about we have to go back to what Nkrumah started saying that until Africa is united we are not going to take control of our resources and to be able to manage them to solve our problems. And he did this by setting up what we call Institutes of African Studies, where the youth in Africa will know about their history, about their economy, about things that happened before they were born. They will have confidence in themselves so that they can be proud that they are Africans and work here in Africa. But what have we seen? Leadership 
of the continent has disappointed all of us. All over the world, when people get money, they use it to develop their economies. If you take people like Mobutu, people like Abacha, they take money from Africa, they save it outside the country, and that money is used to give us loan to Africans. When they die, the money remains there. When Gaddafi took over, he said, no, Nkrumah's dream of independent Africa is a good one. He wanted to do it. They said the man had weapons of mass destruction, so they should kill him. They killed him. Did they see any weapon in this thing? They actually destroyed Libya. They destroyed Libya. If you go to Libya now, it's a miserable place. He said there is no democracy there. People have food to eat. They have buildings to stay inside. Their education system was good. Health was good. They said democracy was absent. Do we eat democracy? Do you think Africa deserves democracy? That's very good. You see, Professor Lumumba once said that one of the challenges we have is that our leaders in Africa don't have ideas. And those who, are, don't, those who have ideas do not have, have power. power. You see, those who have ideas do not have power. So was democracy, was it like a book that was brought by the white man and presented to us and we are not understanding? What is your understanding of democracy? Before the whites came with this the idea of democracy, we were also ruling ourselves in Africa. Chiefs were elected. If a chief will be elected, the council of elders and the kingmakers met. They looked at the character of all the people who will best represent the interests of the town, the community, or the state. Then they made him chief. Whatever he will implement, the elders are the people who will tell him. If you misbehave, you went after somebody's wife, you were distilled, and a different person came. That was what we call our traditional system. Sure. It was a collective thing that you will be the person in charge of all of us. But the decision was taken by the whole community and then you implement. Today, if you have a mom, if you have money, you wake up one day, you are in parliament, you don't have any ideas. So do, do you think we should have an accountability of uh, what our president or our leaders do in the country? We already have that in the Constitution. Our Constitution is a very excellent document. But are we able to go by it? Are we able to go by our Constitution? If you take a look at the Auditor General's report, about 12 billion cities have been wasted. And those people are supposed to be arrested and the money retrieved from them. Have we collected the money from them? Today we are people who are very knowledgeable and very skillful, but they don't have the right attitude. What do I mean? There are a lot of youth in Africa who have, have unconsciously rejected themselves. They have not accepted themselves as Africans. They don't have confidence in themselves as Africans. So you are walking about town. They, are, they even have American flag around their neck. They have UK flag around their neck. They have Israeli flag or China, Chinese flag. It means they are rejecting their identity as what? African. As Africans, which is very sad. That's a Chicago and What does it mean? What is it saying? That, his name is Chicago. His name is Chicago? Yeah. This is not America. I, Why are you called Chicago? I come from Chicago. You come from Chicago? I live for Lomé. Oh, wow. This is my business. Your business? How, how, how is Chicago? Uh, America inside. And why did you leave Chicago, bro? Oh, uh, don't worry me. Would you say that because we don't accept ourselves as Africans, that's why we experience racism when we go abroad because we no, no, no. If we had accepted ourselves, it would have been easier for us to handle racism. The inability to accept is not the cause of racism. As for the racism, it was something that was imposed on us here so that we can feel inferior. For example, 
There was one professor in the UK, we call him Professor Trevor Roper. At the time of colonialism, where they were making Africans look inferior, mm. they regarded Africans as hewers of wood and drawers of water. They felt that our brains were so small and we behaved like children. He saw an African, is like a child. When you give him a, a, a knife, he can use it to cut himself or wound another person. At the point, he even said, undergraduates seduced by changes in journalistic function demand to be taught the history of black Africa. Perhaps in future, there may be some African history to teach. At the moment, there is none. There is only the history of the black man in Africa. The rest is darkness, and darkness is not a subject of history. For people like Professor Roba, they think that since Africans were not writing, they don't have history. But fortunately, today as we speak, they know that history does not begin with only writing, because we have oral history. That was why when they came to Africa, they visited places. It was tall guys from Africa who led them to our mountains, our rivers, our lakes. For example, Mongo Park. He was led by tall guys to go and see River Niger. When he got there, he said, I have discovered River Niger. If I go to London now, and I say, tell Europeans that I have discovered River Thames, who would they think that I am a madman? Being a black American, being a Jamaican, yeah. being uh, from the Caribbean, yeah. some of them don't want to associate themselves with the word Africa. Yeah. Does that link with the self-esteem that you're talking about? Because you definitely don't know your, yourself, no you don't know your roots, you don't know where you're coming from. Yes. You know why? It is not their fault. These are descendants of ex-slaves. Those of us here in Africa, where we know the people who sold our brothers and sisters mm. to mm. the white man, mm. where we not. We the same now the people we sold are better off than us. They are better off than us. Just like the brothers of uh, Joseph, who sold him into slavery, he became a prime minister and he had to save his brothers. So Africans in the diaspora, they don't want to be associated with Africa. They may have their own reason. One, we were, it was our grandparents who sold them out. Two, the kind of things they hear about us, that we are primitive, we are always fighting each other, we are hungry, there is disease, there is death, we are killing each other. That's why they don't want to be associated. You are here in Africa now. When you come, it's Ghana. For, it's a very peaceful place. You can sleep on the ground here on a mattress till tomorrow. Nothing will happen to you. It's a very peaceful place in most cases. But the civil wars that are happening, is, what is the cause? Is it not the Europeans because they want control over our resources? They deliberately cause a conflict so that they can sell their arms for us Africans to kill each other. Slave trade that they brought, it brought distortion. They were giving us guns, gunpowder, whole villages were burned. We brought women beings, they bought. Now, when Industrial Revolution broke out and they no longer needed human beings, machines were replacing human beings. They said, oh, for humanitarian reasons, let's end a slave trade. Slave trade was not good. After practicing it for 300 years, before you realize it's not good. The truth is that it was for economic reasons. When Industrial Revolution broke out, they needed raw materials to feed their industries. They needed markets to sell their goods. They needed military installations to defend their interests. Then you come telling us that you want to bring civilization, you want to bring Christianity, you want to bring education. Uh, all the people in Europe were well educated that they are interested so much in Africa. The type of education they brought was to prepare us to work for them, to help them exploit our resources. So why is it that they did not bring a uh, train to my hometown, Qatar? Because there's, there's nothing there. It went to Kumansi, it went to uh, 
Obasi. It went to uh, gold mining centers. That is where they are interested in. That's where the railway lines and the roads went to. Why didn't they go to Tamale? Why didn't they construct railway to Tamale, Bolga and Wa? They don't, the people don't have anything. Then you say, you are bringing development to us. When the, the development goes to only the mining centers. No, the truth is that they were interested in our resources. Is there any way we can get our gold back? Why? After we have sold it to them and they have paid us something small for it. But they have to pay for reparation now. Now, that argument has been there and I've touched on it that there must be reparation for the slave trade. It's not a strong argument. If I sold my brother to you and you have paid me and my brothers have gone to suffer and I say, ah, you, you were the one who bought my brothers. That's why we are suffering. So you should pay me. Does that make sense? The only reparation we can ask is the soldiers who died in the First World War, Second World War, fighting to protect their land for them. If you take France, for example, during the Second World War, about 500,000 people were recruited to go and fight for them. And about 2,000 people were, uh, what do you call it, workers in various sectors. Some of them died, some of them were mean, some of them became mad after the war. They left them, they came back. Nothing was given to them. If we want reparation, it's fine. But we can talk about debt cancellation because most of these things that we took didn't benefit us in any way. Where can we get this book? It's available on Amazon.com. So anybody who wants it, mm. you can get copies of it on uh, Amazon.com. It's uh, Political Economy of uh, Colonial and Post-Colonial Africa. It deals with uh, the struggle for independence against colonial rule, nationalism, and the struggle for independence, the post-colonial Africa, military interventions, dependency problem, and then poor governance in Africa. Mm. It will give you a thorough understanding of the challenges that we are facing and the role that the youth should play in helping Africa to achieve a United States of Africa so that we will have control over our resources, we will have a common parliament, a common currency, an African high command, no barriers, a single taxation system, internal trade. Africans will treat with each other, then we will have control of our system. We would no longer be subject of control by foreign powers that will continue to take our resources away and we will be suffering here every day, every day, every day till our children become indebted forever. If you had the chance to change one thing, in Africa, what will you change? I will change bad governance. Africa is a place where when you get into position, you forget about the people who voted for you. We need to change bad leadership. And for me, bad governance is when you are the president, but you are controlled by forces outside your country and you do things that are not in the best interest of your people. That is one thing I would work to change. Thank you so much for yeah. talking to me. I really appreciate your time and um, yeah. the knowledge that you've transferred to me and the yeah. entire people watching this video. But I, I personally don't want you to just do um, a one-hour interview with you and that's it. Mm. I am going to create a YouTube channel for you. Yeah. I know you're staying far away from me, but I will create a channel where I will make sure every day or maybe every week you share something yeah. so that the youth of Africa can 
get to have a piece of this knowledge. Mm. I am forcing this in terms of transfer of knowledge to the youth of Africa. And I believe you'll be the, uh, like the best person to teach us the African history for us to know where we're coming from and who we are as Africans. How proud are you to, be an, uh, to call yourself an African? Well, I have always been a very proud African because I feel that it was not a mistake that God made me, sent me to Africa. I have to discover my purpose in life and know why God has sent me to Africa so that I can work to fulfill that destiny. Mm -hmm. And I've all my life, I've been working to build the self-confidence of the youth. So most of the students that pass through my eyes say that you have made us who we are now. Because you can have the knowledge, you can have the skills, but if you don't have the right attitude towards life and towards yourself, you will always have an emptiness in you which nothing can fill. That is, you must know who you are as an African before you move on. The final message for Africans watching us. We need to unite and take control of our resources. As Nkrumah told us years ago, the advice he gave us is what the Europeans have used to have European Union. So what about we, the originators? We have to act now, and this is the time. Act now, the time is now, but I think the African Union we have right now, the Pan-African spirit that exists from the one, the people that came together to establish the African Union, it's currently dead and we want that spirit to resort once again. My name is Mr. Ghana Baby, and uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Like this video, share, so that every African can have a piece of prof. He said I shouldn't call him prof. Simon, Simon Amegashi Biglo. The name Simon is Simon Amegashi, Amegashi Biglo, Biglo of Ghana. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah. I have fire. Bye. Peace out. Yeah.